litany of gratitude after the COVID pandemic. Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings and graces we received during the COVID pandemic. After every petition, let us say together, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love, despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory, now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather around the table of the Lord as one family, and we beg for the grace that we may follow the Lord in his suffering and death and resurrection as we continue to reflect on this holy week. And so let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, 
you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together who disputes my right. Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help, who will prove me wrong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me lord in your great love answer me for your sake i bear insult and shame covers my face i have become an outcast to my brothers a stranger to my mother's sons because zeal for your house consumes me and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I look for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him to what they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. There are times that we also call this day as Spy Wednesday because it pertains particularly to the account of the betrayal. Yung mga sandali na pinalano ni Judas yung kanyang pagkakanulo kay Jesus. And for this day, let us look at his character. The character of Judas Iscariot. Madalas kasi tinitingnan lang natin yung kanyang pagkakanulo. Judas, the betrayer. And even in the Gospels, when the Twelve was being introduced, it is only Judas who has that special description, the one who will betray him. Kaya nga, para sa ating mga Pilipino, pag tinawag nating taksil, hindi lang natin basta tinatawag na ahas. Pag tinawag nating taksil, tinatawag din nating Judas. Kapag taksil, kapag traidor, hindi lang basta ahas. Judas. Pero, bakit nga ba nagiging traidor o Judas ang isang tao? Una, hindi niya alam yung kanyang ginagawa. Bakit? Paano po nasabi, paano na ang tinasabi na hindi niya alam yung kanyang ginagawa? Paano natin nasasabi na walang alam ang isang tao? If you look back at our gospel, Judas was very sure of what he was doing. He knew that he was handing Jesus over with 30 pieces of silver. Yet, when Jesus told his disciples that one of them will betray him, he had the guts to say, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Because the moment we betray someone, we lose our capacity to think. We lose our very selves. That is what would happen to us when we sin. Alam nating mali, pero minsan, hinahanapan natin ng katwiran. Kasi ginagawa naman ng karamihan eh. Kasi ganun na yung kalakaran. Kasi ganun na yung kultura. Nakikisama lang naman ako. Nagahanap tayo ng iba't ibang dahilan para mapagtakpan yung mali na ginawa natin. We lose our capacity to think. 
Why? Because we force illogical reasons to justify the wrong that we have done. We lose our very selves because we simply act based on our instincts. Pangalawang bagay, bakit nagiging traidor o hudas ang isang tao? Dahil hindi pa tayo marunong makontento. We don't know how to be contented. Kung babalikan ho natin yung kwento ni Judas Iscariote, alam natin na siya rin yung tagahawak ng pera ng grupo. He held the money bag. At dahil hawak niya ang, hawak niya ang kaperahan, dahil walang magbabantay, madaling makakupit, madaling makanakaw. At dahil hindi, lang, hindi na sapat yung kanyang nakukupit, kailangan mas marami pa. Kailangan mas malaking halaga na. At kapag hindi ho tayo marunong makontento, matatrydor din natin ang ibang tao. Kapag hindi tayo kontento sa mga talento natin, asahan natin, sisiraan din natin ang iba. Kapag hindi tayo kontento sa kinalalagyan natin, lagi nating iisipin, dapat ako'y nandiyadyaan. Dapat ako'y nandyan sa posisyon na yan. Dahil hindi lang naman sa lapi o pera yung sukatan ng pagiging kontento natin. Pero kung an tayo at kung ano ang meron tayo, ang nagiging sukatan ng ating pagiging kontento. At gaya ni Judas, no? tinitingnan niya pa kung saan pa siya makakakuha para sa kanya. Hindi na niya nakikita yung tunay na kayamanan na nasa tabi na niya. He was never contented even if the greatest gift he could have, even if the greatest gift he could ever have was already beside him. We betray people because we do not know what we are doing. And when we do not know what we are doing, we lose our capacity to think. We lose the very essence of being a human person. We betray people because we do not know how to be contented. We fail to see what we have. We fail to appreciate what we already have. Masakit matawag na Judas dahil yun na siguro yung pinakamatinding larawan ng pagtataksil, ng pagtatraidor. Pero sana maalaala din natin na mag-isip bilang isang tao upang maamin din natin yung mga pagkakamali natin. At sa ating pag-amin, makagawa din tayo ng hakbang para ayusin to. At sa ating mga pakikitungo, makita rin nawa natin yung biyayang nasa harapan na natin. Please stand. As we approach Good Friday with confidence in our loving God, let us recall the saving action of Jesus, his servant. For every intention, we will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer unjustly may receive God's comfort through a clean conscience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our own sufferings may strengthen our faith in the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those among us who are putting off making their confession because of pride, fear, or laziness may come to the realization of the need for God's forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and all those who suffer may experience the healing presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may share in Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
in silence we lift up to the Lord our personal intentions, remembering all the people who are asking for our prayers and for all the people whom we promise to pray for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you gave us the example of your Son to show us how to live and die. Grant us the faith we need to follow him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. And thou, and thou was almighty God with the firm conviction that through your son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight we join the diocesan shrine of San Vicente Ferrer in Cabuyao, Laguna, who will lead us in our healing rosary for the world tonight at 9 p.m. You may follow them through our social media platforms. Patuloy po nating ipagdasal ang kagalingan ng buong mundo, lalo-lalo na po dun sa mga naapektuhan ng pandemya ng ating dinanas. At sa mga susunod na araw, naanyayahan po namin kayo na makibahagi sa ating mga pagdiriwang dito sa Manila Cathedral. Ito po sa Christmas ng alas 7 ng umaga, bukas na pangungunahan po ni Cardinal Advincula. At ganun din po sa ating Evening Mass of the Lord's Supper sa hapon ng alas 5. At sa Biyernes Santo, sa pagdiriwang at paggunita natin sa kamatayan at pagpapakasakit ng ating Panginoong Jesus sa ganap na ikatlo ng hapon at ang ating Easter Vigil sa Black Saturday ay sa ganap na ikawalo ng hapon. Ang mga pagdiriwang po na ito ay pangungunahan ng ating mahal na arusobispo, Cardinal Jose Advincula. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray to partake unceasingly of the Paschal Mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.